Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about Windows 7 clean installation. We're going to focus on the requirements from the 70-680 exam requirements, where we need to understand the installing, upgrading, and migrating to Windows 7, specifically performing a clean installation. So let's talk about first what a clean installation really is. There's uh, no operating system on an existing computer. Maybe you got a brand new hard drive. You installed it into a computer. It's not one where we need to migrate data off of it. They weren't running something previously. Uh, we're not dual booting. We're not going to run one operating system and run another operating system right next to it on the same hard drive and boot from one or the other. This would really be a brand new installation of Windows 7. So don't think that we're going to be doing upgrading or any other type of migration when we go through this. We will be doing some of those things in other modules, though. You're, you are going to learn to dual boot. You are going to learn to migrate some of these other things. We're just not going to do it in this module. The idea here is that we're going to be booting from a Windows operating system on some kind of media. And that may be a DVD-ROM. It may be USB storage. It may be out on a network somewhere. Or in very large environments, we may be booting and using an installation from a Windows Deployment Services server. And you'll often hear this abbreviated as WDS. We're going to talk more about deployment services and doing large-scale installation of Windows 7 in other videos. There are a few ways to go through the process of installing Windows 7 in a clean installation. One is just the standard install. And if you've ever done an installation of Windows where you sat down, you put in the DVD-ROM, or you, you started up the installation media, you know that it asks you a number of questions. You have to answer yes to the licensing. You have to put in your time zone and a lot of other things as well. But if you're in a large environment, you may not want to have to sit there and answer a lot of questions just to get the installation done. So Microsoft, of course, has thought of this and says, well, you can build an XML file that already has the answers in it and simply add that to your installation media. And if you'd like to do an unattended installation, you can put the answers in something called unattend.xml. If you are not booting from installation media, then that's a perfect one to use to be able to do that. If you're simply upgrading a Windows environment, you may want to use unattend.xml. But when you're booting up, there's a number of extra questions that are asked. And so it's a different XML file. It's actually called autounattend.xml because there is information in there about disk partitioning called destructive information. So you're changing the hard drive. And so you need a little bit more information in an XML file, and you have to specify it as that auto auto unattend.xml file, file, and you put that right on your boot media, and you use that to be able to really configure from the very beginning to the very end for a Windows clean installation. If you were looking to auto, automate a clean installation, it would be the auto unattend.xml file that we would use. What we're going to do is a clean install of Windows 7. It's on a computer that has a brand new hard drive on it. There is no previous operating system. We aren't going to be doing any migrations. We're simply going to install Windows 7 on a brand new hard drive. And I have my Oracle VM virtual box capabilities here. I'm going to run this as a virtual machine right here on my desktop. So you'll be able to follow along from the very moment that I power on this virtual machine all the way through the Windows 7 installation. If you want to refer back to the video we did on how to use this virtual machine technology, we've got a whole video on it. And then you can grab that video and see exactly the details behind what we're doing right here. I've configured this. This machine is in our gate room. It's going to be a Windows 7 machine. I have allocated 1 gig of memory to this system, which of course is the minimum requirement that we're going to need to get Windows 7 installed. And 20 gig of our, our hard drive space. That's the size I've set aside for the hard drive on the system. I have an ISO file of Windows 7 Professional that I have virtually slid into the CD-ROM, the DVD-ROM on here. But of course, you could boot from a CD, a DVD. You could boot from USB. Or you could view, boot from this ISO file if you're working in a virtual box environment. Let's start up this particular machine, and let's see what we get. We start and we get our Oracle VirtualBox running. Let me slide over this so we can see it from my other window on this side. I'll make this so that it fits on this side of the screen so we can see it pretty well. So Windows is running inside of this window that we have here. I'll maximize it so we can really see everything that's going on. 
inside of this window is just as if you were starting this up on a physical computer. And it's really starting the Windows pre-installation environment directly from the virtual CD that I've installed onto this computer. As it starts up, we're going to get the normal prompts that we get for a Windows environment. One thing to keep in mind here as you go through more of our video series is that we're going to be answering questions as we go along. And you can create some automated XML files here that will answer these questions. Instead of us going through and manually sitting here and clicking and typing things in, it can be done for us automatically. We simply put the DVD in, and we let it run. And it runs until it finishes, and then we take the DVD out. It's a very easy way to install Windows 7. In our case, we're going to choose the English language in the United States. And our keyboard method is a United States keyboard. Edit your language, other preferences, click Next. You have some options right here from this main installation screen to install Windows 7 right now. If you need to do some repairs on your computer, there's a nice recovery toolkit that's available right here under Repair Your Computer that can go and take your configuration back to a previous version. You can restore from a backup that you've done. You can run memory tests and much more. It's all under the Repair Your Computer link right here. So it's kind of nice to have that Windows 7 installation media handy in case you ever need to go and run some of those repair capabilities. In our case, we're just going to install Windows 7. I'm going to click Install Now. As we do this installation video, there are huge chunks of time where we're waiting for files to load or we're waiting for screens to pop up. So I'm, I'm collapsing all of this down so you don't have to sit in real time with me to watch this go by. And I'm going to stop and, and focus in on things that we need to see during the installation process. The first thing we get is the license terms for the Windows software. And you'll want to read through the license terms and make sure that the things in here that you agree with and it's OK with you. If you like what's in here, you can click that you accept the license terms and click Next. Now what type of installation do we want? Do we want to upgrade, which means there's a previous version on our hard drive? In our case, there is not. So we want to do in a custom or install a new copy of Windows. Doesn't keep files, doesn't keep settings. You're obviously only going to do that if you have an existing operating system that you would like to dual boot, or if you really are installing it fresh like we're doing right now. And it says, where would you like to install Windows? In this case, this drive has no space on it. It's not partitioned. I've done nothing. It's as if I was to install a brand new 20 gig hard drive in this virtual machine. And I would like to install Windows in that unallocated space. We'll click Next. At this point, Windows is going to go through the process of saving files to the hard drive. It's going to reboot a few times. There's a lot that happens here, but it's mostly hands off. There's not much prompting or waiting as it goes through this. Once it finishes the process of copying all these files, getting things on the hard drive, rebooting, and finally getting that major process completed, it'll come back to us and ask us some other things about networking and other pieces that we'll get to a little bit later. But in the meantime, if you'd like to just sit back and watch this go by, if you're doing this on your computer, you can go get a drink. You can find something else to do with your time. Because at this point, we're really just waiting for Windows to finish its copying of files and doing the things that it needs to do to get this installation up and running. Once the Windows 7 installation has installed all the files and rebooted, we now we get to the main setup process where Windows 7 Professional wants to know, choose a username for your account and name your computer to distinguish it on the network. So the username, this will be the professor. And the computer name here, this is in the gate room. So we'll call this the gate room computer. We'll click Next. Type a password. Do a very secret password that nobody can remember. We'll type something in here. I'm not even going to put too much of a password hint in here. Um, you'll want to put something very specific to your configuration so that if you happen to forget the password, it will tell you on the screen what it happens to be. I'm going to put that this is a hint, which of course has nothing to do with the password I put in there. But I wanted you to be able to see that that is something required that you must put in. Now you need the Windows product key. So you're going to make sure that you have the product key that was provided for you. If you bought this online, then Windows uh, Microsoft will provide you a Windows product key. If you have it the, out of the box that you bought somewhere, then it will be in the box or on the box itself. And you're not going to be able to see me typing this one in, but I'm going to type in my product key so that we can continue with the setup process. And then we can go to the next step. 
Once your product key information is in, Windows 7 says protect your computer and improve Windows automatically. You can use recommended settings, install important updates only, or ask later. Now, obviously, for security threats, you want to stay up to date with all of the latest settings and all of the latest patches. In almost every case, you would use recommended settings unless you have a really good reason not to. You'll then be asked for your date and time. I am in the Eastern time zone of the United States, and I'll have it automatically adjust my clock because where I live, there is daylight saving time. The date and time will be listed then. And if everything looks good on the screen, my time is actually a little bit later there in the day, and it is the afternoon already. And if all of that looks good, we can click Next. Now we need to set up where this computer will be used. Will it be in a home network, a work network, or a public network? And this helps you determine what access external devices will have to this device. This is in our gate room, so this is here on the work network. And now Windows 7 takes everything that we've given it, finalizes the settings, and now starts up with that configuration. When Windows 7 starts up, we're logged in because we provided our username and password. It immediately starts downloading and installing the updates. And now we're at a fully functional Windows 7 desktop. From here, we can do all the things we may want to do with the operating system. So really, it's that easy. Once we get the installation going, it copies its files. We answer a few questions. We now have Windows 7 running right out of the box. And notice how easy that was. It was able to find all of the hardware we had in our system, the video cards we were using, all of the different audio and setups. Didn't even prompt us for any of that. We simply had it install. It found all of that for us. And now we're at a working operating system. Let's review some of the things we've learned about this clean installation of Windows 7. Our first question is, which file allows you to run an unattended installation? And if you recall, there were a couple of different files we can run, an unattend.xml, or in the case of a clean install like we're doing here, you'd probably want to use autounattend.xml. Our next question is, what is a characteristic of a standard installation? A standard installation is one where we're simply answering the questions as we go along. It's interactive. And as we're asked questions about the time zone that we live and what the date is, we can answer those information as we're going through the installation process. It's not an unattended installation. It's simply a standard installation. And lastly, what does a clean installation mean? Well, when it clean installs, exactly what we did in this scenario, there was nothing on the hard drive. Nothing was partitioned. There was no existing operating system there that we would need to upgrade, migrate, or in some way dual boot to. And that covers our requirements from this module on the 7680 exam for configuring Windows 7. We've now done a clean installation of Windows 7. And we can now use that information to start building on it to create some auto attend capabilities, to automate the deployment of Windows 7, and much more. Thanks for joining us on this video. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free certification videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, or send me a message, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.